Now in the continuation of the LL1 parsing, let us take one more example for doing the parsing. So this is the grammar for which we have already computed the first and the follow. We, you, you can look at the previous lectures wherein we have discussed about how to compute the first and the follow. We have taken the same grammar to compute the first and the follow of various symbols. So uh, having computed this first and the follow for the various symbols, let us draw the parsing table for this. So for, the pass, for drawing the parsing table, you need to write the uh, non-terminal symbols on the row side and terminal symbols on the column side. So the non-terminal symbols are E, E dash, T, T dash and F and the terminal symbols are plus star, opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis and dollar. Yes, we have ID also. Okay, so it's better to write dollar at the last. So we have ID and we have dollar. So these are the symbols that we need to write in the parsing table. We have to fill the entries of this parsing table according to the two rules defined. The first rule says that you have to pick all the productions which does not contain the epsilon. So what are the production which does not contain the epsilon? Those are T produces T E dash, E produces T E dash. First take this production. So you have to find out the first of right hand side means first of T. First of T means ID and opening parenthesis. So in the place of ID and opening parenthesis, in row number E, you will write this production E produces T E dash. So E produces T E dash will be written in opening parenthesis and ID also. Okay. Now the next production that does not contain the epsilon is E dash produces plus T E dash. So uh, first of right hand side means first of plus T E dash means for plus I, uh, this will be plus. So you will write E dash produces plus T E dash in the E dash row and plus column. E dash row plus column will be written E dash produces plus T E dash. Okay, next production is T produces FT dash. Find out the first of right hand side. It means first of F. First of F contains ID and opening parenthesis. So you will write T produces FT dash. So ID and opening parenthesis T produces FT dash will be written in the T row and ID and opening parenthesis column. Okay, next production is T dash produces star FT dash. So this is star. So T dash produces star F T dash will be written in T dash row and a star column. Next symbol is F produces I D. So F produces I D will be written on right. I have first of right hand side as I D. So at the place of I D in the F row, it will be written as F produces I D. Next symbol is the next production is F produces this one. So first of right hand side means opening braces. So F produces opening bracket capital E and closing bracket. F produces opening bracket E and closing bracket will be written here. So these are all the production which does not contain the epsilon. Now let us deal with the productions which contain the epsilon. This is according to the rule number 2. So rule number two says that for the production of kind E dash produces epsilon, E dash produces epsilon will be written at all the places of follow of E dash. Okay. So follow of E dash are plus and uh, sorry, follow of E dash are dollar and closing parenthesis. So E dash produces in the E dash row at the place of dollar, it will be E dash produces epsilon and the closing braces also. So E dash produces epsilon. Now the next production that contains epsilon is T dash produces epsilon. So go to the T dash row. At the place of follow of T dash, you have to write this production. The so follow of T dash contains plus dollar and closing braces. Okay, so T dash produces epsilon is written at all the places of follow of 
t dash okay so this is how we uh, draw the parsing table fine so having constructed this parsing table let us now do the parsing of the string let's say the string given to us is id plus id dollar so this is the string given to us and we are going to do the parsing of this string so for this we need to have we need to take uh, uh, this a stack in which we need to put this dollar and the start symbol that is e now on e on this symbol id so e row and id column e dash produces e produces te dash we need to replace this e with te dash but in the reverse manner so e dash and t fine now we need to see t t on id t on id is t produces ft dash so t will be replaced with ft dash so t produces ft dash but in the reverse manner so first t dash will come and then f will come and then f on id f on id is f produces id so f will be replaced with id now there is a match of id and id here so since there is a match you will replace this symbol or you will remove this symbol from the stack so the stack now contains dollar e dash t dash so since there is a match and we have replaced this we will move to the next symbol on this string that is plus so t dash on plus t dash on plus is t dash produces epsilon so we will replace this t dash symbol with the epsilon on the stack you remain with only e dash now you're going to see e dash on plus e dash on plus is e dash produces plus t e dash so you will replace this e dash symbol with e dash produces plus t e dash but in the reverse manner so e dash t and plus now there is a match of t and uh, match of plus and plus here so plus will be removed from the stack so plus has got removed okay so we will now move to the next symbol that is id so t on id t on id you see this table t on id is t produces ft dash so let's write it here so on the stack you can see that we have e dollar e dash and t so t on id is t produces ft dash so in the place of t we are going to write ft dash it means t dash will be written first and f will be written next then we are going to see f on id so f on id is f produces id so f will be replaced with id then there is a match of id and id here so id will be removed okay id will be removed so we will move to the next symbol that is dollar so t dash on dollar so t dash on dollar is t pro t dash produces epsilon so t dash will be re replaced with the epsilon it means t dash will be vanished from the stack now we are going to see e dash on dollar e dash on dollar is e dash produces epsilon so e dash will be replaced with the epsilon so on the stack we do not have any symbol we do only have a dollar and in this string also we have a dollar so since we have only dollar here and dollar here also it means the string has got accepted okay now there are certain things that you should remember for the ll1 parsing it means the top down ll1 parsing or the predictive parser first thing is that ll1 in the ll1 parsing l means left to right left most derivation this this l means left most derivation okay so left to right and left most derivation we have done one is the number of look ahead so how many look aheads we are seeing or how many predictions we are doing it is one only so this technique is also known as the predictive parsing technique okay 
Now you can see that in this table, the table that we have formed, it contains several entries which are not filled like this, this one, this entry, this entry, all these entries are blank. So blank entries actually means that whenever in the parsing these entries will be encountered, it means there is an error. So all these entries are actually referring to the error. So while doing the parsing, if these entries are encountered, we will say that this is an error and parsing cannot be done. Okay. So parsing cannot be done if a error is encountered. Okay. But you can say that the string given to us is not according to the grammatical rules. So this is the first thing. Second thing is that uh, uh, an ambiguous grammar cannot be used for ambiguous grammar an ambiguous grammar cannot be used for this kind of the parsing. Another thing is the left recursive grammar cannot be used for this parsing. If you will do the parsing with the left recursive grammar, you will come to know that there are multiple entries in the same cell. So if there are multiple entries coming in the same cell, it means the given grammar is not LL1. What we are saying, you should listen it to very carefully that uh, there is a given grammar. We are going to do the LL1 parsing for that. While doing the parsing or while filling the entries in the parsing table, you find that there are more than one entry in the same cell. So that means that grammar cannot be used for the LL1 parsing. So that means we will also say that the given grammar is not LL1. So one in, in the table, every cell should contain at most one entry. If more than one entry are there, it means the grammar is not acceptable. Another thing is the uh, non-deterministic grammar cannot be used for the LL1 parsing. So non-deterministic grammar cannot be used for the parsing. And you will also say that the ambiguous grammars can also not be used for this kind of the parsing. Left recursive grammar can also not be used with this LL1 parsing. So these three types of the grammars cannot be used for LL1 parsing. So these are the very important point that if the grammar is ambiguous or it is left recursive or it is non-deterministic, it cannot be used for the LL1 parsing. Okay. So you can take several examples by yourself and uh, try, to, try to do the LL1 parsing. Thank you.